Jeff, you had, I think, four bench players av- er, to play almost 20 minutes. How important was it to get them those minutes and kind of get that, that bench to develop even more? Well, I, you know, it, it's something that we've actually been doing a lot of throughout the entire season. I think O might lead us or Nyla in minutes played at 26 or 27 on the, you know, on, on the year. Um, so we, we've been getting a lot of kids a, a lot of minutes because we're that, I think we're that well balanced. And as I challenge him, I'm looking for that one person too who's going to be like, hey, you have to play play me for 32 plus. Uh, but o- overall, we, 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 we did some really good things tonight, t- uh, today, and then we were bad at times. You know, our 16 turnovers, we had 10 going into the fourth quarter and turned it over six times in the fourth quarter just on crazy stuff that, you know, some of them want, want, want to play some more, but they've got to do something with the minutes that they're getting in order to give me the confidence to put them in more. Jeff, uh, some of the players after the game spoke about just how good of a conference the ACC is right now. You guys play teams that aren't exactly in the upper echelon of the conference, but they've said it themselves. Anybody can really catch anybody on a day uh, in this conference. So what is it like seeing kind of maybe like how you mentioned some of those struggles today against Wake Forest and for them to kind of you know bear down and pull? Yeah, I, I thought we c- competed for all 40 minutes. It's just, it's just about playing a, a, you know, a, a cleaner basketball game. Uh, our, our our league's as good as any league in the country. There there's there's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, I think you look at Duke. I think that one one by I don't know how many today. I think it was a lar- a large amount. Uh, it's a Duke team that goes on the road and I think gets beat by Stanford in overtime by three. I, I mean, that just shows you how good our league is. You know, and it's every, every night you've got to come prepared to play. It, or you're going to have yourself a, a, a dogfight. I mean, even our game up at Pitt, you know, you look at the final score and it's a 30-point win, and you're like, oh, it was a blowout. It's a 10-point game going into the fourth quarter. And it's not like we're up 18 at half and then put it to 25 and then you win by third. No, we we came out in that fourth and played extremely well, but I think that's my concern is we need to put more minutes of those together. And then if we go on a wall, if we have struggles, we can't turn it over and give up easy baskets. I mean, we, we, we've got kids, which I've got film now, which is great to show them. I mean, the opponent shoots the ball. Wake shoots it. I got two kids going to rebound, and the, uh, the other three don't even cross the three-point line. Well, everybody's got to go rebound the ball. You know, it's just not my job. It's all five players. So those are the things that we've got to clean up because my concern is, I told him in the circle, is Thursday at – Clemson's going to be a dogfight. I mean, they're a real. Amanda's done a great job. That team is playing extremely hard. And what makes me think that's going to change? Like, why do I think all of a sudden on Thursday everybody's going to go and rebound the ball if you're not doing it now? It, it's habits, and it's bad habits we have to break. So I'm hoping we come back here on Tuesday. You know, tomorrow's our day off. We'll have Tuesday and Wednesday to hopefully fix some bad habits and then come out on Thursday and at least play a cleaner game for longer. Yeah, Jeff, you guys were up by one at the end of the first, pulled away in the second. What was the biggest change there? It looked like you defended better in that second quarter and closed out, caused a few turnovers. Yeah, I, we, we did a much better job de- defensively in the second quarter. Then we stopped fouling him as well. Um, you know, we put him at the line six times in, in, in the first quarter. It, it's something you can't do. We had it up to, I think, a seven or eight point lead. I think it was 22 11. And I think they may have gone on, on an 8 0 run. And just crazy. I mean, we just throw it away. We don't pick up. We don't match up. We give kids shots that are wide open that we know are shooters. Those are the concerns that I have. If somebody sh- makes a three that's not a three-point shooter, well, then I'm, I'm fine with it. But when we tell you that's what they do, then we need to guard them. So I thought we did a much better job there in the second quarter. And then in the third, you know, we extended the lead, and then that we turned it over a couple times, then, then got it back up. Uh, you know, was it 25 with four seconds to go there in, 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 in the third? So overall – 
you know, we 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 played a pretty good basketball game. I'm I'm not pleased at the 62 points that that we gave up, especially the the 21 in the fourth. But offensively, you know, we're scoring the ball, shooting it well. We we just have to cut down the silly turnovers in order to give us more opportunities to score. Now, you know, one of Nyla's or Nyla, yeah, one of Nyla's is she gets an offensive rebound and there's three people around her and she's trying to get out of it and ends up ends up traveling. You know, so that's one of those, yeah, she gets the O board, but she gets the turnover. So those are the turnovers I tell people all the time. You know, if you just look at the number of turnovers, oh, you turned over too much. Well, then I should have told her not to get the O board because she wouldn't have gotten the O board, then she wouldn't have got the, the, the turnover. So there are turnovers that are going to happen in a game that are just, it, it's part of the game. They're, they're forced turnovers. We have to li uh, eliminate the ones where we're taking the ball out of bounds and we are careless and we throw it and we throw it to the wrong team. We get a rebound and they've, they've taken it from us once, stepping back in front of us, and then we allow it to happen two more times. Those are the ones we have to eliminate. Jeff, you've talked about getting Aleph some more time. With teams that are gonna have taller post players coming up, how would you say she's developed and what do you wanna see more from her? No, I I think she's doing a great a, a great job for us, and it's going to benefit her when we start playing teams that have more so true true post players. Uh, although she does a great job for us guarding guards and wings because she's the best we have and the best I've coached at not swatting down. Like she never swats down when someone drives. She stays vertical and is phenomenal at it, and then challenges people to finish over her. So she's she does a really good job job of that, um, you know. But what, sometimes when you're playing teams with four guards, it's a little bit more of a challenge because O and Nyla have been playing so well. It's like you know I'm try I'm trying to get E on the floor with with one of those two at the same time. Um, you know I'm I'm excited because she's been putting a ton of time in the gym, working on her shot, and she made a beautiful post move. She sits there and she 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 knocks down her three again, and it's something she does in practice. And, and she did when I watched her play in Europe. So, she is she can make the three. Now we've just got to continue to get that confidence for. Her. It's almost almost a broken record question, but you know, there's NFL playoffs are going on, and you have you know almost nine thousand people here and. And it's a it's a good a good crowd, good turnout, a great. It looks, you know, like you wouldn't know the playoffs were happening, but yeah. that's a that's a testament, I would say. To, to I, I think, and, and it's not it's not like it's a warm 62 outside, you know. So we so we have some fans that are are getting in the car, you know. It's not like I was thrilled to to come into work this morning, you know. I was like, golly, can I just stay in the bed? So. It does. I mean, we have some of the best fans in the country, and I thank them after every single game because I don't take them for granted. They have options. There's other entertainment activities that that, that they can do. But I will say, I, I'm and I and I'll keep saying it. We have been blessed here to have some really good teams, but we've also got wonderful players. I mean, they do an amazing job in this community. And, and at times, I, and I know our fans appreciate it, but I, I'm not sure our community as a whole really knows what they do. You know, the amount of hours they spend out in the community is off the chart. And just even when they go to the mall, when they when they go they, they go out to eat, like it's it, it happens a ton where I'm getting an email saying, "Oh, your your three of your players took pictures with my kids," you know, when they were at dinner. So because they're willing to do that. That's why I think fans come back as well. And I've said it all, all the time, every year I've been here, it's just as much my responsibility as, my, as well to make sure that I'm out, out in this community giving back as, as much as I can. I mean, you know, I enjoy going to speak. Now I don't know why anybody wants to hear me, but I enjoy going out to speak. And I really just ask them, please come to the game. Come, come to a game. Just come out to a ball game. And as I always say, the great thing about this place, if you don't like it, have a couple beers. You know, have a mixed drink. 
have three or four, and then the game will look great. You know? But it's, it's true. And then they come, and then they're here. And then I've never had someone that I've convinced to finally come to a game that hasn't been to a women's game go, man, that shit was bad. You know, I've never had it. They're always like, God, I never realized how talented they were. I, I didn't realize how athletic they are. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Because I will say, once you – our fans, what I love about them is when we win, they win. And when we lose, they lose. I mean, they're invested. And I think that's what makes this place so special is I appreciate that, I understand that, and I value it. And we're going to keep working our tail off to get more in here, to get 10, 10 or 12,000. Um, but, again, on a 2 o'clock on a Sunday – the Wake Forest team, who I, I thought competed and played hard, but they're four and thirteen right now, zero and five. You know, this is the amount of uh, attendance that some schools are getting. Well, they they don't even get this on their big promo game. You know, it's their promo game to pack the place, and they're getting four thousand. So this is a testament to the fans that we have here. Speaking of attendance, AD was here today. How important is it to have? You know, former players like them who have had success come back and so into your current players. Oh, it's great. I mean, it, it's really important, and we and, and we value that, and we appreciate that. We try to keep the relationships that we have with all, all, all of our alumni. You know, and it's it's hard for a lot of them because right now we have several that are in Europe playing. You know, but whenever they're back, we try to get them here. We try to get them here to to, to talk to our team, to talk to our players. Because as I tell our current players, the reason. 8,900 are out here. It's not because what this group's done right now. You know, we started the year with 8,000. It's because of what the teams in the past have done. And now it's their turn to keep things going. And it's their turn to hopefully, let's see if we can't add to this. And that goes all the way back to Angel, to Dez, uh, all of them. Jeff, I felt like Jada had a pretty efficient game today I realized one of those shots was that crazy one at the end of the third quarter uh, that went in but how do you think she played today I thought after I ripped her ass I thought she played much better she's got to figure it out she is a kid that she spends so much time in that gym she works on her craft she works on her skill set and then she'll come out there and just exist and I told her, I said, you're, you're not here to exist. You've got to make a difference. Give me tempo. Give me energy. Give me passion. And I, I, I said it very nicely. <laughs> and she finally started to play like that. And that's what I keep challenging her with. I, she is a kid that I have gotten on her more to shoot the ball. I'm like, you know, she, oh, well. I only got a couple shots. I go, I can't help that. You're open. If you don't shoot it, what do you want me to do? You know, and then tonight I thought she did start to attack. I thought she played well. Sure, the one shot, you know, it goes in at the end of the third quarter. But, see, that's what happens when you put time in the gym and you work on your game. And then it, you play hard. Sometimes you get that luck. Okay? Because it goes the other, the other way, too. When you're a fraud – and you don't work on your game, you can try to hide it, man, but it, it, it exposes you. If you can't dribble, uh, teams find it out, and they watch, and they make you go the way you can't go. And then all of a sudden, you start looking real bad. You can't hide. This, this is one sport it is really hard to hide. Because if you can't turn, turn, turn over your, le your left shoulder in the post, everybody's going to make you turn, turn over that left shoulder. As we always say, the great players – the great players, as the years as the years go on, and even as the year go on, goes on, they change a scouting report. It's my favorite line to tell them: change a scouting report. If they've got it down that you can't shoot, change it. You know, it's the one thing I'll say about Angel <laughs> McCautry. You know, her first two years, she she wasn't a very good shooter, and then she was dead set to say, no, nobody's going to tell me to not shoot, and she got in that gym. And she got herself a ton better. And that's what it's all about. Like, when you, after that, her, her freshman year, actually, after her freshman year, because I watched the kid play for th three, four years in, in Baltimore when I coached in Maryland. 
I mean, she would shoot it and then run after it because she knew it wasn't going in. And then she'd get the rebound and score. And then when she got to college, she realized, okay, I'm playing against a lot better players, and they're, I'm going to make them have to guard me. And that's what this game's all about if you want to be elite. You know, coaching's great, and I love to coach. I love the X's and O's part, the strategy, trying to run something, trying to figure out who I'm putting in the game. But as a player, there's nothing better than walking out on the court and a coach going, back off, she can't shoot, she can't shoot. You know, and all of a sudden you make four. Because now I will tell you, I've had plenty that I've coached. I'm back off, back off, and the best thing that ever happens is when they make that first one. Because then they keep shooting that thing. And normally it's clank, clank, clank after that. You know, so a lot of times if you're, we're not guarding somebody and they make the first one, I'm not upset. Because I know now they think they're hot. Now, unfortunately, in, in the past few games, we're like, hey, she can shoot it, and we leave her open. <laughs> And she makes it. It's like, no, that, that's, not the, that's not the idea right now. Uh, so it, it's been fun. And Jada, if she'll play with pace, play with tempo, and play with urgency, she's a really good basketball player. Coach, I'm sure a lot of this program's success can be credited to the um, excellent scouts and the, um, your biggest critics. What does Miss Lucy think of this year's squad? Yeah, you'd lose. Well, we don't listen. Here's here's one thing. We're we're being filmed here, and the one thing I'll tell you about Luce is she'll she'll tell you what she thinks, and that's probably not always a good thing. So we're gonna not let her get the mic. <laughs> I might have a few players that might not be happy with what uh, her evaluation of of tonight's game. That's pretty true, right, Luce? Yeah. Yeah, no, she will. That's why I, I will say I'm, I'm, I'm really fortunate. I've got a two, two, uh, two, two young daughters who, a, after a game, if you start asking questions, they actually watch the ball game, can can break it down, and can give me an evaluation. And they're and they're pretty on point. Uh, we're waiting to see how Big Sis did tonight at her tryouts for her AAU team. I know. Now you know Jess, Jess L Lemley, who's now married, is. She's coaching, so I keep reminded her. I played you some, <laughs> you know. I mean, don't don't be too mad at me. I mean, I got, I gave you some minutes. Now, so uh, we're excited, aren't, aren't we, to hear to hear how things went? Thank you, everybody. I appreciate y'all. Go Steelers tomorrow. <laughs>